I recently did a video sharing some of my favorite editing tools in Adobe Lightroom. And if you haven't seen that video, I will have it linked up here or down below. And today I thought I would do a similar video sharing some of my favorite tools in Photoshop. I use both of these programs pretty equally in my editing workflow. However, they are quite different from one another. So today what I'm gonna be sharing is some simpler tools that are really easy to learn how to use. If you're brand new to the program, you've never heard of these things, they're pretty awesome. Okay, the first tool that is just amazing is the sky replacement tool. All you have to do is pull in a photo, any photo that has a sky will work for this. This is a photo I recently posted on Instagram. Go up to edit, click sky replacement, and the software will automatically detect where the sky is and pop up this box with all kinds of sky and editing options. And right off the bat, it looks so good, but you can play around with the edge, the brightness, the temperature to match the photo, the scale so you can zoom the sky in and drag it around to show the part that you like. You can flip the sky so the sun direction matches the rest of the photo. And there are tons of skies to choose from. Blue skies, sunsets, you can even throw a rainbow sky in there, which for this photo looks really fake. It's so fun to play around with, but it is tricky because once you see your photos with the cool sky, you don't want the regular sky anymore. So if you have a photo that has kind of a blah sky and you want to spruce it up a bit, this is the tool to use. Content Aware Fill. I know a lot of people know about this one, but if you're newer to Photoshop, maybe you haven't learned about it yet. And Content Aware Fill is amazing at removing things from a photo that you don't want there. I use this tool always. So for example, I have this photo here that was taken on my last pre-COVID international trip, which was to Scotland. I was over there for a week working on a project with Visit Scotland, and we got this castle all to ourselves to shoot in, which was absolutely amazing. And there are a couple of things I want to remove from this photo. First, we have a couple of people in the back here. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool from the toolbox and I'm going to draw an outline around them. Then I'm going up to edit and clicking content aware fill. And it's going to pull up an editing panel with two views. And Photoshop does a pretty good job of guessing at this from the start. As you can see in the right side of the panel, this is a preview of the fill that it's come up with. And then the left side is going to show where that fill material was sampled from highlighted in green. So looking on the right side, the fill isn't totally perfect yet. Specifically that grass line isn't exactly exactly even where it should be. So I'm just gonna go to the left side and unhighlight most of the grass so it doesn't sample so much of it. And as you can see, when I do that, the software produces a new fill that is more accurate. So if you do a content aware fill and it's pulled samples from areas that don't make sense for that spot, just go unhighlight those areas so it's not pulling from them. And then also here on the left side, I don't like how this lawn edge juts out there. I think it's kind of imbalanced that it's just on one side of the photo. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm gonna grab the left lasso, draw around it, select content aware fill, and right off the bat, it looks pretty great. So I'm just gonna select okay. This tool is perfect for removing people, power lines, anything you didn't realize was in the photo. It makes it super easy to get that stuff out of there. Before I move on to the next editing tool, I wanna say thank you to Adobe Photoshop Express for sponsoring today's video. Photoshop Express is a mobile app that you can use to edit your photos on the go, and it has a lot of the standard Photoshop features in it, like presets, advanced healing, where if you want to remove something in the photo, you just draw over that area and it will remove it. But there's also a lot of really fun, creative stuff you can do with it. Like when you're in the mix workflow, if you select cut out and then auto, it'll automatically select the subject of the photo. You can go in and refine this if it's not perfect. And then the cutout is its own transparent layer that you can add to any kind of background or scene that you want. They also have some really cool layouts. I especially like the pin board and the shapes layout. The S1 layout with these triangles, I think is really cool looking. Overlays too, like their watercolor overlays are really nice and you can change the opacity of them as well. And then there's also a lot of text overlay templates. So if you're making Instagram stories or pins on Pinterest, there's a big focus on creative tools. And I will have a link down in the description to download Adobe Photoshop Express on mobile. So definitely check it out. The next editing tool in Photoshop that I use constantly is the Select 
subject tool. And I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that I didn't know about this until like six months ago, which is really annoying because I have been doing this process for years and years and years, but I've just been DIYing it. I didn't realize there was a one click tool to do this for me. So if you want to select a person in your photo, instead of carefully tracing them with the selection tool like I did for like 10 years, just go to select and click subject. It usually is really great right off the bat. Every once in a while, I have to edit the outline a little bit, but it's so useful if you want your subject to be a different layer. I use this the most for my video thumbnails. For a lot of my thumbnails, I like to have text that like weaves behind me. So what I do is I click select subject, it selects me, I create a new layer. The shortcut for that is command J on a Mac. And then I add my text layer. I type out the text and format it how I want it. And then I just make sure that my selected subject layer is above the text layer so that I stay in front of the text. It takes like 30 seconds and it's amazing. Camera raw filter. Okay, so this one is really cool and I also didn't know this for a really long time. I love the editing tools in Lightroom, especially the HSL tab where I can select a very specific hue and change the hue or change the luminance or the saturation. Well, it turns out you can just go to filter camera raw filter and it pulls up a panel almost identical to the one in Lightroom. There have been so many times where I'm editing in Photoshop and I'm like, I want that orange to have more luminance or saturation. And so I would export from Photoshop and pull it into Lightroom without realizing I could just do it in Photoshop. So those are some of my favorite simple editing tools in Photoshop. And I would love to know what your favorites are, especially after not finding out about a couple of these until recently. I'm sure that there are so many other ones that I don't know that everyone else probably knows. If you're newer to Photoshop, I hope this video was helpful and there was something in here that is useful for you. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you all are doing well and I will see you in the next one. Bye.